Uh, you talk quite a good talk. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> but, I mean, ultimately, UKIP aren't going to get into power. Your European representation is never going to be more than, say, 20 max. Why is it not, why is it a waste, not a wasted vote for you in a general election? Well, I, you know, I think one of the first things in a democracy is that you should be able to stand up and fight for what you believe in. And if what you believe in is quite different to the entire political class today, then you should stand up and fight for it, even if the odds appear to be against you. So that, I mean, that's the first reason we should stand. Uh, the second reason we should stand is because there's more than one way of winning. Look, what do we want? What is it? What do I, you know, why have I come out of business, out of a lucrative career in the city, to do... Um, was it Alan Duncan described it as being sort of menial pay? Well, it's not menial pay to most people out there, but certainly to me it's menial pay compared to what it was before. I think it was rations. Right. Yeah, rations, wasn't it? That's right. Well, you know, he was an oil trader. He had even far more, he had far more than I did. So, you know, why have I done it? I've done it because I believe in this. I really, really believe in this. You know, I want my four children to be able to grow up in a country that they can call their own. I believe that our future is a global future in terms of economics and in terms of relationships and not just a European future. But there's more than one way of winning. <clears throat> We've got three ways. There are three ways of us winning our independence. One is, with, it, one is that we form a UKIP government. <coughs> that may appear to be unlikely to you. And I would accept that on May the 6th next year, I don't see there being 331 UKIP MPs. I mean, you never know, but I, <laughs> but I don't see it, and I, would, I, you know, and I would concede that to you here, and as I would anywhere else. But that's one way of winning. The second way of winning is because our arguments are winning with the general public, and no one could deny that. You know, when I first got involved in this, this was real minority sport stuff. You know, not many people out there thought that the European Union posed a threat to their ordinary lives, and it's now, and we've been the only people saying it, it is now the clear, settled, majority view of people in this country that we want to trade with Europe, we want to be friendly with Europe, we want to be good next-door neighbours, knowing with the French that won't always be the easiest thing to do, <laughs> but we don't want to be part of a political union. So, so the second way that we win is that by winning hearts and minds amongst the public, that we get one or more of the other major parties that steal our policies. And this happens... I mean, the one, the one Nation Party in Australia, Pauline Hanson, the fish and chip shop owner from Adelaide. You know, she formed a party in 1990. She won 10% of the national vote. John Howard took over the, effectively, the Conservative Party in Australia, <coughs> stole every single policy from her. She disappeared, but she'd won, didn't she? Because we had four terms of, of, of John Howard <coughs> with those policies. And the third way that we can win is because of the pressure... And because of the threat that we pose to both parties in the marginal constituencies, that they throw their hands up in horror and they give us, the British people, a free and fair referendum on this issue in which we vote, I hope, to do the right thing. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to win. Um, and, and somebody has got to be out there fighting and making these arguments. And look, you can say it's a wasted vote. You can say it's impossible. But believe you me, you know, when I was having a drink with Lord Such, and having soundly thrashed him by 198 votes in the Eastleigh by-election, nobody then would have thought that UKIP would have gone on in a European election to being the second biggest party in the country. So we've come a long way. Uh, politics is changing, and it's changing very, very fast indeed. <coughs> Trust in the established parties is breaking down. We could finish up next May with a hung parliament. So would you consider it a success if you got the Tories to adopt a strong Eurosceptic policy? I would consider it a success. The morning that I wake up knowing that we have freed ourselves from political union and we are once again a free, independent, self-governing nation. How we get there doesn't bother me. You know, I'm not tired, you know, UKIP isn't sort of stamped through the top of my head, even though I've given the best part of my adult life towards it. The reason that I give UKIP what I give it is because it's the only effective vehicle that I've got to push and fight for the things that I believe in. If UKIP didn't exist in five years' time, I wouldn't be heartbroken. What I want to do is win, and it's the issues that matter. To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.